Wow! Hey everyone, I'm Elliot and welcome back to our third part of Cyber Chat. Once again, we have our cybersecurity expert with us today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. It's always fun. <laughs> nice to see you again, Jonas. Well, today we're going to be learning a little bit more about how to protect your cyber identity. So maybe let's get started. Uh, what does it mean to be part of the cyber world? So being part of cyberspace means being connected with the internet and communicating, playing video games, social media, and talking with our friends ordering food, everything happening, everything is happening on the internet. So being part online needs a cyber identity. So the internet knows who we are. Right. Um, so the internet we all know is a, you know, is a big place. Uh, but what are some of the threats that come in from the internet? So Elliot, the internet is indeed big and dangerous. There are a lot of threats which can target you and me on a daily basis. For example, the cyber predators who engage with children who are on the internet for the very first time. Additionally, there are so many more scams online, especially in Singapore. Did you know that most of cybercrime in Singapore is actually scams? Oh, wow. I did not know that. And it's, it's all about the money in, in that scenario. So they, they want to make money out of you and they're targeting uh, all of us. So they're taking advantage of you and by finding out what your cyber identity is, right? What does that actually mean? Sure. So when we meet each other, I can see you, you can see me. Yeah. So let's say we go on social media and I see your online profile, maybe on Facebook, on Instagram or on Twitter. There are a lot of different platforms where you use a cyber identity. It's something which represents you in the world of Internet and, and it provides some information to others um, which are also on the Internet. And is that why we need to protect our cyber identity? Yes, it's very important to protect your cyber identity because very often there is information in there which is not out there for everyone. You only want to give this information to, your, to the people who you trust. Uh, what are some of the things that we should be aware of when logging into a shared device or a public device? Really good question, Elliot. I do see, especially in schools, for example, and I remember my school days and my university days, People are using the public computers and they're logging in into their social accounts. So whenever you do this, the first thing which is really important, when you're done, you need to log out. Because if you don't log out, someone else can walk on this computer and maybe post something. But you also need to be very careful that if you log in on a public computer, that you don't save your username and your password on this computer. So protecting our information when it comes to login, usernames and passwords is very important. Maybe you could share a little bit more about what's the difference between a public profile and a private profile? Sure, very good question again. And especially in an age of social media, with influencers, mm -hmm. with, with uh, public personas, it's important that some people, they want their information to be out there for everyone, and others, they prefer to have the information only available to people to their trust. But very often, unfortunately, when you sign up for the first time to these websites, you are a public profile by default. So it means that if you don't take security steps, everyone can see what you post. So it's really important that you make sure that your account is private if you don't want other people publicly to see it. Yeah, no, that's definitely true for me. When I was much younger, I would post a lot of things and now that I'm older and I look back, it's like, oh, maybe that's not that's not me anymore, right? So you can keep some things private and some things public. Is all private content or private profiles really private? Is it really secure? So that's a little bit the question of private. And mm. I think it really depends of how much you trust the, the solution you're using, the, mm. the, the application. The, like the platform that I'm on, exactly. right? Yeah. If, for example, if you configure all your settings very private, but there's an issue with the platform itself because they don't take security very serious, then maybe a hacker gains access to this platform and he can steal all the information. For example, I do spend a lot of time on these underground forums. Most people cannot access them right. because you need special software and you need some skills to find it. Right. But I do find information in there which is clearly not meant for the public, but attackers were able to hack individual computers and then they're selling it on the, we call this the darknet, on the underground forums. Uh, 
And that, that's interesting because once they find that information, they can pretend to be you or maybe try to figure out your passwords and stuff based on that information, right? Exactly. I mean, when you and I, we call our banks, the first questions they usually ask you is, okay, we need to make a check for security that it's really you. And I get asked, when is your birthday? What company do you work for? What is your email address? And these informations are very often also part of any of your online pr profile identities. Right. Uh, could you share an example of a stolen identity really, you know, playing a part of relating to a child or a teenager? Yes. So there are a lot of chats and, and programs out there who are targeting the younger audience. We have some really scary people on the internet, some adults who are targeting children because they, they want to know more about these people. They want to interact with them. They're asking them, hey, can you send me a picture of you? So it's it's very, very dangerous place. And they're, they're trying to take advantage of these kids and uh, who don't know any better. Exactly. In my opinion, especially if you don't know if who's talking with you, don't reply. And if you're ever unsure what's happening, talk to your parents and ask them for advice. Could you provide us maybe three tips on how to have proper online expression? Yes, sure. So what's very important when you interact with the internet, you should never say something which you wouldn't say in real life face to face with someone. Mm -hmm. Because people sometimes think they are behind a keyboard and now they can say whatever they want. But what's really important, whatever happens on the internet will be on the internet forever. You cannot take it back, you cannot delete it. So please be very respectful and also be positive because so many people are angry and negative and try to be mean to others. So that's why cyberbullying is a very big problem. And we see a lot of people suffering for many, many years because people are grouping up and are bullying people over the internet. And it's a really big problem. So be positive, be respectful, and only say things which you really would say to someone else also in person. Maybe you could share with us some advice on the best ways we can protect our online identity. Sure. So there are a lot of things which I think are important. First of all, I recommend to everyone, please check whenever someone engages you and you're not sure who it is, you should ignore it. Or talk to your parents or someone you trust and ask them, hey, what I'm supposed to do. It's, it's very normal that when you experience the internet for the first time, and I remember this very well with my early years, there are so many new things and you have no idea. You're completely overwhelmed. So it's, 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 it's completely fine to ask someone for advice. How should I behave on the internet? So one thing is make sure you know who you interact with. Then a second part, which is really important, your password. Don't ever tell anyone your password. Your password is something only you and yourself should know. Because on an internet, internet identity, all you need is a username, which a lot of people know, and then you need a password. So these two things are very important in my opinion. Thank you so much, Jonas, for sharing us so many tips today on how to better protect ourselves in the cyber world and to protect our online identity as well. And remember kids, there are three things you should always do while being online. Be respectful, be positive, and only say things to other people that you would say in real life. I think those are some very helpful and easy tips that we can employ our day-to-day -day life when engaging with the internet. We are at the end of our series, but that doesn't mean the learning stops. You should go online to find out more about how you can contribute positively to the internet, but just make sure to find the right sources as well as you know, approach a parent or a mentor or someone that you trust uh, if you're ever confused of what is on the internet. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.